So today I'm going to introduce to you what is called as a flowchart. In your programming life, right, flowchart is quite important for you uh, because it helps you to analyze and understand the code. Unfortunately, Curtin did not teach you about flowchart. So what is a flowchart? A flowchart is essentially mean something like this. Uh, this is called as a flowchart. Okay. So if you see this triangle, right, this triangle, this triangle mean if if statement, uh, if statement. If there's an if statement, right, there's always true and false. This is true. This is true condition. Then this is a false condition. Uh, false. So if true, right, then what happened to here? This is the code. And then false, right? Ugly. Let me draw properly. False, right? Then what happened to here? This is called as a flow chart. So today we are going to look at flow chart. So far can understand uh, what is a flow chart. I give you an example. Uh, if x is more than zero, right? If x is more than zero, what happened? If it's true, then x is equal to more than zero in here. So if it's false, right? Then you continue to check if x is less than zero. This is the flow chart. This flow chart is completely correct already. You don't have to worry about it. I already checked it yesterday. So far, can follow is a flow chart. We are only look at if first, uh, if statement first. I'm not going to touch in other parts. If you want to look uh, properly at the flow chart, right? There's other what you call uh, other rules, uh, other, other rules like this uh, message to prompt message, etc., etc. I'm not going to touch it. I just want you to know the if statement first. So far, can follow. As I mentioned last week, right? If you see a code something like this, right? If your code keep checking if dd is less than or equal to 31, if you keep checking again dd is less than equal to 31, dd is less than equal to 31, what happens? It means right, something is wrong with your code. Uh. Something is wrong. Uh. I'm not saying your code will not able to execute, but it is very inefficient. Uh. Inefficient. Inefficient, okay? Not efficient. Uh. Why do I say it's not efficient? Because in your if statement, right, if you look at this flow chart, right, if dd is less than or equal to 31, if it's true, then it is better that. What happens if it's false? If it's false, right, it's going to check again if dd is less than or equal to 31 in here, okay? So if it's false, right, it's going to check dd is less than or equal to 31. So what happens if it's true? If true, in here, in here, then it's going to print, it's going to print the message. What happens is if it's false? If it's false, right, it's going to check again if dd is less than or equal to 31. So if you, if you can, if you see here, right, until the end or until the end of this line of code, right, you will keep checking if dd is less than or equal to 31. That's why this code is very, very inefficient, okay? I'll give you an example, uh, say if our, our day month year, day month year is, say the user enter 32, 01, 2020, uh, 2020. In the first criteria, what you check is 32, okay? The dd, the dd, okay? If your dd is less than or equal to 31, right, the result is your dd is more than 32, 31, I mean 31, okay? So the result is false. So we enter this branch. What happens if you enter this branch? It check again, oh, dd less than or equal to 31, okay? Your dd now is 32. Then the result, of course, is false. Lah. Then you enter this branch again. Then you check again, dd is less than or equal to 31, okay? The result, of course, is false. Lah. Okay? So you enter this branch again. Until you reach here, then only it stop. Lah. Only then it print invalid. So this is very inefficient. Lah. Very, I would say very silly, okay? Very silly. Uh. I try to use a very, very mild term. If I say silly, right, I respect you. Uh. I respect you very much. And this is a very mild term already, okay? So how to improve this code? I'm going to repeat one time only, okay? If you are doing looping, right? If you are doing looping, right? This is very important for you. Because in our looping, right? We are not going to execute the code like one time only. What you see here is execute one time, okay? One time, we run the code one time. If you put this code in a loop, right, what happens is every loop, it will execute it. It will check if dd is less than or equal to 31. If every loop, it check if dd is less than or equal to 31, right, it's very, very inefficient in the sense, okay? So, what we do is, if you want to do looping, right, you need to consider this more carefully. Even if not doing looping, right, I'm very careful about my code. Uh. I don't, I won't make some mistake like this uh, most of the time, uh, okay? I'm not saying I won't make mistake, but sometimes I do make this mistake also. That's why you need to recheck your code, okay? So how to improve it? By moving it to be a... I call this as parent. Uh. I call this as parent, okay? I call this as parent. I call this as child, okay? I call this as child. Remember this term. Remember this term. In next class, right? If I say parent, right? Then you need to understand already what is parent. I call this as parent, okay? Then this is the child. Uh. This is the child, okay? So I say I call this as parent if. So what you need to do is you move this. This one, right? DD is less than equal to one, right? You move it to the parent. So and then you remove this off. You can remove this off. You check one time only. You check one time only if dd is less than equal to 31. Then only it execute this part of the code. If not, what happens is if dd is, is not less than equal to 31, then it will direct execute here. This is what this code means, okay? So if you still don't understand, right? You don't understand what is this if statement, right? 
you can use a flow chart okay if you go back home you can practice to draw your flow chart by yourself so let's see what happened now if our dd is equal to 32 also so if our dd is equal to 32 right you check in here first if dd is equal to 32 if it's not 30 if it's not less than equal to 31 right so the result is false right? if the result is false right then you direct enter here okay can you see how efficient this is? Direct print out invalid already. Compared to this one, compared to this one. If your DD is equal to 32, right? What happened is you need to go here, go here, go here, go here. Only then it print invalid. Okay. So you can see how inefficient this is. So by optimize our code, uh, this is a little optimized. That is very important. Uh. Your compiler won't go and optimize for you like this. Most likely, uh, most likely, your compiler will follow your code. Uh. So this is very silly. Uh. This is where you need to make your improvement by yourself. Uh. Put dd less than equal to t1 as a parent so i i will call this as parent uh. this is a parent this one one is this copy okay. this is a parent this is a parent this child is belong to this part uh. this parent is this part so another example of another example of this is called as nested if uh. this is the reason why we need to use nested if on the first look right our nested if look like a bit longer oh. actually it's not longer uh. you are saving a lot oh. you're saving a lot you don't need to type dd less than equal to t1 already compared to this code uh. compared to this code you see you keep right you need to keep writing dd less than equal to t1 which is uh, yeah, don't do it la just put a parent in here la less effort and more efficient also okay so far can follow ah uh, can follow uh. i give you 10 seconds to digest before i move on to the next one can follow okay let's continue uh. 10 second so let's look at some of uh, yeah. so one day right one day or uh, when i when i open my whatsapp right one student go and write this code for me oh uh. wow hi uh, you see you don't come p2p class and then you make this type of mistake. Hi, uh, I really hate it. You look at this code. What is wrong with this? Uh? It's called a structural, structural if. Okay, a structural, structural if, structural if. Hi, <sighs> this code is so lame. Eh? So lame. Okay, so lame. L A M E. Uh. So lame. What is wrong with this code? Uh? This code is you check if x is more than zero, right? Then in display, x is more than zero. If x is less than zero, x is less than zero. If x is equal to zero, x is zero. Wow. Oh. So terrible uh, this call. I cannot believe uh, up until week 3 uh, could someone do something like this. Uh? Ay, uh, how do you optimize this? In this situation, right, since you know already, say if your answer if x is equal to okay, okay, I give you one simple as example first. Uh, say what if our x is equal to negative one? Let's let's compare this code. Uh, if x is equal to negative one, right? So you're going to check here first if x is more than zero. If x is not more than zero, right, then you go to this line, okay? If x is less than zero, okay. So it stopped already. Uh. X is equal to less than zero already. This is the answer. This is the answer. But what happened next? You need to execute this part also. Uh. You need to execute this part also. You need to execute this part also. You need to check one time again if X is zero or not. So this code is very inefficient in the sense that you need to use else if to optimize this. This is something you need to follow, okay? You need to do it by yourself. The compiler won't go and help you to optimize this type of thing. Because this is the instruction you give. Uh. So let's look at this part. Uh. Let's look at the flow chart. Say if our x is okay, say our x is equal seven. What happened? So we check first is x is more than zero. Okay, correct. Oh. So if our x is more than zero, right? Then it will correct. This part is correct already. Ah, uh. this part is correct. So it will display x is more than zero. After that, right? We enter the second line. Ah, uh. we enter the second line. So we are checking here. Uh. Is x is less than zero? No. Ah, uh. our x is seven. Right? Then the answer is false. Ah, uh. answer is false. Then it goes. You need to check again. Oh, uh, if x is equal zero or not. Then the answer is false. Uh. Then only it reached the end. Uh. That's why I call this a shitty. Uh. Okay, quite shitty. Only then it needs to reach the end. How do you fix this code? How do you fix it? If you want to fix it right, you need to use else if. Okay, practice to use else if. Let's look at this part. If x is more than 0, then you display x is equal more than 0. Okay, if x is less than 0, then you display x is equal less than 0. If correct already, right, it won't, it will direct exit the if not, it will direct. Okay, I say like this. If this is true, then it direct jump to here. It direct jump to here. Is how to read an if statement, else if statement. If it's, this one is true, I use another pen color. Um, let's go and use blue. If this one is true, then what happened? This code will direct jump to here. Jump till the end already, okay? Jump till the end. This is what this code do. Uh. Let's analyze. Uh. Let's say if our x is equal to... Let's say our x is equal to negative 1. Let's look at this code. Uh. Say if our x is equal to negative 1, what happened? Negative 1, uh, sorry. Is negative one. Is x is more than zero or not? Our x is negative one. Uh. So false, right? False is enter here. Uh. You check one time. Uh. If x is less than zero, true. Uh. Because our x is negative one. So if true, what happened? It reach here. Uh. And then it go to this flow chart. Uh. Look at this flow chart, okay? The direction is go to here. Okay? It display x is less than zero. Then complete already. Can you see the difference between 
this one and this one. The above one, right, you need to execute no matter your answer is correct or not. If your answer is still correct, right, it's still going to execute this line. That is the difference. Uh. That is the difference why you need to use else if statement. I hope by this week, now it's week 6, right? I hope by this week 6, you already be clear in this part. I hope I don't need to repeat this again. I, do, I hope when you send me or show me your code, right, you don't make this type of mistake again, uh, okay? I'm going to call it as mistake from this now on. I'm going to train you to be a very good developer. I don't want you to write a shitty code. Uh. I want you to write a perfect code. And also, right, if you write like this, right, um, okay, la, I would say you have saved your typing skill. La, but if I'm going to read this out, if I'm your teacher, uh, I, will, I will deduct your mark. Uh, I will deduct your mark. But don't worry, la, I think probably PDI won't deduct your mark. La, but the best is practice this, okay? Practice this. Use your good practice uh, so it becomes habit. If you don't use this, right, next, next time when you go interview, what happened? When you go interview, you go and write this, uh, you go and write this code, uh, who want to accept you into the company. When your, when your, what do you call, uh, human resource, human resource manager, look at you, uh, look at this code, uh, ay, uh, he said, hey, this programmer got no basic knowledge, uh, don't know how to use else if, uh, you, you, you know? that's why you need to learn, uh, need, need to learn from now, okay? So when you learn, to write an efficient code, right? In your interview, then you can soon soon lily already, okay? When the interview asks you a question, you can direct answer without much thinking, law. If you go and start practice from now, law, okay?